All right, we're live. We're live. Started it. Yeah, we did. I'm just trying to regulate the chat here. We got super. Here we go. Here we go. I don't know if the sounds tip top. Has it started? Are we watching it or what? I guess so. I guess so. Hold on. We're not watching it live. All right, hold on. Hold on. Just standing in front of the camera the whole time. I think that'd be neat. Yeah, it is on. How's the sound? It's on. It's on. All right, guys. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, we're not sure if the sound's tip top. It it seems like it is. Quit hitting the mic. It might be. It's it's all right. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we didn't have a podcast last week. I actually got too busy. It was you know work and stuff like that. I had to go to Dallas, and uh, but you got a chance to get out. I got a chance to get out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. How was it? Most of the week. Monday wasn't good. Tuesday got better, and Wednesday was a good day for yeah. sure. Yeah, Tuesday wasn't bad either. I mean, it was a bit. Uh, you bit got a lot of suburban. I thought it was a late trout. It was, that was a lot of fun. It was definitely interesting. How much do you think it weighed? Probably 13, 15. Wow. It was big, man. It was, it was a big bourbon. I, uh, it's only a matter of time somebody breaks that right. I, I think so too, but the thing is, I don't know, the Burbit, I've got the fucking Burbit curse this year and the Laker, the Laker curse, dude. I haven't got a Laker out there yet this year, but I've got two Burbit. I mean, lost, uh, like, so I lost the Lake Trout on Wednesday for sure. That was my bad, but I think, I think, I think the Lake Trout fishing is only going to get better out there. So, I'm yeah, excited. a lot of, a lot of them are. Starting to feed heavily now. Yeah, I caught one. Well, I, I had a couple on this weekend. Um, I landed one. The one I landed puked about a pound of goby everywhere in the hut. Like what I had in my hand. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Uh, what I had in my hand was just uh, a little bit of what she puked up. The rest we stepped on it and all that stuff. So, and we can't see how many people there. How do you, how, how do you check that usually? I'm not sure. I yeah. thought it usually showed up on the on thing. Nah, that's okay. That's not a big deal. We'll figure it out halfway through. We'll come to us, I'm sure. <laughs> I just got chirp. Seb's dressed like my dad. Like my dad right now. Hey, but I was, I had to put a shirt on. It's the first one I've seen. Looks clean. I matched the map. I, I just thought I'd put it on. Um, you know, been busy. I just finished editing that one video. Pretty killer. Oh, no water, I think. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that video. You did a great job on it for sure. We, it's I can't and, show all the underwater footage. Yeah, because you'd be sitting for hours. Oh yeah, because you don't catch every fish that come by, and there's some fish that come by that don't even care. They're just literally swimming through. Yeah, for sure. And we noticed that a lot on Tuesday. We we noticed a lot of fish that would come up, and because of the way the sonar works, it looks like they would come up on your bait, and then they would come away real quick and we just we realized yeah. that they were just doing the right for our calling, right? Yeah. Yeah. But because Josh would always be drop, trying to drop to them. I'm like, dude, when they're turned blue like that, they're swimming away from you, not 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 because they're going to the bottom, right? But yeah, but you saw on one of their videos that one lake child just came in, mm -hmm. flared on bottom and left. She didn't eat that, was, that was so weird. I don't know why. That's that. why when you catch them, you see they got zebra muscle marks and everywhere. I think they scratch themselves, but I think they do that for other reason too. That's when the gobies are hiding. They just go back, hit them with their tail, and they come back later and try to come up when they're mm -hmm. dizzy. Um, yeah, that lake truck came when we had no bait under the hole. Really? No, because we were just uh, taking a picture of the other lake truck. Hmm. There, yeah, and there's two that moved in that quickly, that, that quickly there, right? Yeah, because that's what my buddy said. My buddy said that he's having he was having a rough go up there this year, and he caught two in 15 minutes one day, and that was the only two lake trout he caught all year. 15 minutes apart. Right? Yeah, and he didn't catch any others for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, I I think I that's what I predicted myself for myself at the beginning of the season, like at the show. It would be a really hard lake trout season. Mm -hmm. um, sure, is, I don't think anybody's got double digit days on lake trout. I don't think so. I was yeah. talking to a guy today that claimed he catches 
three to four a day, but he's not getting the huge days that that other people do. Yeah, he's also fishing very deep, and he's a guy that's been on the lake for a long time. I know he goes out there and he grinds every day he can. Yeah, right. So it's a very skilled angler, and for him to say that it's only catching three to four, I think he's having one. That's not what we were catching it back then, though. It's true. No, it's true. It's true. If you're fishing deep, you should be catching more consistently. Yeah. Well, a lot of change, a lot of stuff changed. You know, we're not seeing um, the the same area of producing. That's true. No, I not one area last year or two years ago produced the same. It's all different right now. I think it's the bottom composition. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Bottom composition, I think, is huge. I think it matters more than. A lot of people want to pay attention to in in certain areas, right? I think in deep water, bottom composition is a little less important. But yeah, they're just cruising on there, just cruising on there. Not really. Yeah, they don't really care what's going on on the bottom. But you no, know, you're right. It's 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 yeah. It's just it's been a, it's been a tough year. I mean, it really has. Yeah, a lot of guys are talking about my shirt, man. They're chirping. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, he said the other option was no shirt, so this is what we went with. Yeah, yeah that's what we went with, man. Uh, today we on uh, uh we got the Radio Roulette IPA from Redline. We had Redline last last last, last yeah. podcast. That's Poly Super Bar. Yeah, uh, it's a craft beer in high high gear. They call it. It's an IPA. There's a lot going on here. There's a, actually heard it in my eyes. There, there's a lot going on. Um, but the way the flavor is doesn't it's not represented well what you can no no it's a good ipa it's not that strong and it's not fruity like this it looks like fruity. this this looks fruity the name's not that fruity though well it's um, a little bit fruity but so this one hold on hold on see i can one. uh 6.7 percent alcohol you gotta drink it cold, obviously. <laughs> but it doesn't say much anything else. But it, it's a good beer. I really enjoy. It. Solid, solid. That's solid. We're gonna rate this soon. There you go. One hundred and three Lakers in one day. Just set up tip offs and just that. That's how you train for marathons in New York. You just set up tip offs on that lake and just run between them. Yeah. And little guys. Yeah. Little guys. Uh, I went up to Perry Sound and catch Lake Trout and I'll call with Whitefish. Yeah. I'm going to actually just stay here. Uh, that's a good beer, man. We're going to rate this right now. Strong, strong, good smell. Strong, good smell. There we go. See, Bass is a nice change changer. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. Hey, don't sell I matched the beer, man. What are you talking about? Okay, I matched the beer. That's what I tried to do here. We're going to rate that beer. It's definitely a strong seven. <coughs> I'd say a good seven point seven. I went down the wrong hole. Uh, yeah, a good seven point seven. It's it's the aftertaste not bad. It drinks well. I drink a couple like that. Uh, I'm already feeling it though. I'm not even at the bottom of the beer. I'm I'm feeling it. Who are you drinking? Your papa with it? Me. I got Coca Cola. The last one I had had my name on it. Oh, did it? Yeah. There's no way they'll have my name on it. Got a bunch of stuff to talk about, guys. There's a lot of stuff that I'm working on right now. I got some rods with me we can talk about. You guys got questions. I got this thing here. An extension cable. That's what that's for. So if you want to plug something in from far away. See this right here? This is 100 yard, 100 yard with a Wi-Fi uh, connection here. And uh, what attached to this is this bad boy. You didn't see this yet. It looks like something from James Bond. It's pretty yeah. heavy. Um, I'd say it's it's it's, it's it's probably five pounds. It, it's solid. And the way it connects, you connect it here. My battery's inside. And you got a remote control. Um, this is pretty expensive. It's the ROV uh, Trident. Company lent it to me for a couple of weeks. I've been using it and it's got LEDs 
to see at night. You see at night like clear as day. I went out at night. No way. Oh yeah, you, you see everything. Right there? What? Damn. A bunch of perch. Bunch really? of perch. And they're sleeping on bottom. <laughs> yeah. Um we got a lot of small muck footage. We got a bourbon footage. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I haven't shown yet. Yeah, I really want. No, it's small. It's probably like eight, nine pounds. Mm. But you should see where it bourbon, is. Man. They're super active during the day. It's insane. The bourbon? Yeah. He was yeah. all over the place. Yeah. All over the place. And d these fish don't care for the drone. They really they don't, don't care. Bourbon don't seem to really care about anything. <laughs> it's weird. They're hard. Like, but a lot of these know. fish come and see the drone. But that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, when I get a week off soon, uh, I got to do a bunch of guiding. I'm taking a week off. I'm gonna be using this, and I'm gonna go all over the lake. Which I I've done a part of the lake with this, where I, I wanted to film some structure, uh, but I want to go deep. I want to see those lake trout swimming around. How uh, deep does it go? 100 yards. So really, it'll go. How does the pressure affect it that much? No. Okay. No, no, no. What do you mean pressure? For when it goes down. There? No, no. It's it's built heavy duty. Mm -hmm. Heavy duty. Yeah, hunting and fishing Ontario. My dad is Maltese. Fish, hold this. Jesus. This ain't cheap. No, it doesn't feel cheap at all. It's cool with the controller. Only one thing with it is I'm at, it's it's uh, it's a bit hard to get the footage on the computer. You got to download it from there to your SD card, your SD card. And I mean, it's connected by Bluetooth. It's HD. It's HD. I haven't shown any of the footage yet. Hmm. I want to wait. Uh, a lot of the footage I'm keeping for next year. MSRP, I think it's sixteen hundred bucks USD. No controller. You can control it with an Android phone, Android tablet. You're talking twenty four hundred bucks by the time it gets to the border. I am trying to work something with these guys for you guys. Where if you're interested, you send me a message on Instagram. I'll give you a coupon code and you can get a discount. That's, I mean, the guys that are going to buy this are That's mostly going to be guys like me, so not many. Yeah. Right? Me, but $1,600. It's a lot of money. That's, that's a lot of dough, dude. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of dough. Um, so we got this covered. You guys want to see some stuff? You guys think I should run some stuff? Let me know. Other stuff we got are... The two rods as you saw in the video i mean they're super light super light super well balanced with a reel i put it like this with a reel and it just comes back right up every time so i really enjoyed those rods super light super comfortable and this everything about these rods are designed uh with the help of will at wicked custom rods and he's listening I said, that's what I want for two rods for lakes and coal. One for whitefish, one for lake trout. This is the action I want. This is the blank I want. This is the amount of guys we should have on. The colors and how far the butt sticks out. So this is not somebody at an office that never ice fished that designs a rod and tries to save on cost. 90% of rods out there that you buy that are ice fishing, they're fiberglass rods. Yes, that's true. You'd be surprised at the amount of fiberglass rods you end up buying. Because it's cheaper. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper. It's it's cheaper. The guys they're using, they're, you know, they're it's rods. all about cutting costs. A lot of the rods, the longer rods you use, they're two pieces. This is one piece. Mm -hmm. You know, this this from the, the butt to the tip is one piece. The right Miguel, I love them. You know, they're one of my favorite rods, but they're two piece. Mm -hmm. That piece connects into this piece. Mm -hmm. Um You'd be surprised. I tell people that I come all the time. They look at me like I got freaking two heads. Yeah. The amount of rods that even has a split grip rod and the blank's supposed to go through the rod. So look at the real seat on this. You know, it's designed for ice fishing. All the connection with a car carbon fiber insert. I don't know if you guys can see, not really. So we got choice to go with cork, obviously a bit more expensive and a bit heavier, or ADA. Be honest with you, EVA feels a bit cheaper, mm -hmm. but it's also much more lighter. So when you want to hold it like a pen like this, it's so much better. So much better. Good action on these rods with a backbone, you know. You can drive that single hook through. 
Um, the right McGill rods are really good if you're using treble hooks. Yeah, they're a great treble hooks. But not That's everybody can use good. those, right? It's Unless you got the rod, rod the Mund Munder, the Mondo hut, like you're yeah. not using it. Even my hut is like pushing it. My 50s yeah. on my hut are like, I have to set up so the wind, wind doesn't push it towards me. Hut, Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate. Uh, so here's the kicker: you're gonna get one of a kind rod. Well, I shouldn't say one of a kind. There'll be labels. We're gonna get a hundred of each. There'll be a serial number on it, so you'll get rod zero nine out of hundred. I was gonna say it'd be like a prank, but like oh nine out of one hundred. Yeah. So limited quantities. Um, you know, like sign them all. No, they'll be called, you know, the one, one's going to be a, a Seek House layer, which is this one, different color. So you'll have your, your gray blank rod, and uh, we're thinking of doing purple. And it'll look good, like that, like a dark purple, like this, like that. That shines, like gray. Yeah. And the lake trout, you know, the lake trout will be 42 inch. They're both medium. Man, I, I really. When I got those rods in my hand right away, I could tell a big difference. The lake, the lake trout one, you should have the, the accents, but tan like your truck. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I mean, it, it's all about Will. He's watching right now, so he's going to read some of the input. They're balanced really nice. Yeah, they're, man, they're so comfortable, though. Yeah, they're so nice. comfortable. Like, I just, especially this year, nothing's hurting my finger. My finger from the right McGill here is destroyed. Yeah. All winter season, split and cracking because it's so sharp there. Mm -hmm. Right. So those are the rods and MSRP. We don't have pricing yet. You're not. It's gonna be a bill minimum to buy those things, and, and probably and then some. Will's gonna let me know the price. You're getting Fuji guides, expensive. You're getting your graphite rod, expensive. I mean, you're getting a custom rod designed for Lake Simcoe, numbered for you, and you're going to get a one-year warranty. If something does happen, you just send it back in. You pay a minimum fee. You know, we're talking $40, $40 probably, and you get a new rod. Like th These are not the rods that you get at your store. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing with, about rods, guys. I've had hundreds of rods you, you as well you had a lot of rods yep rods break whether they're fiberglass ugly stick carbon fiber graphite whatever rods don't break because of manufacturing no no they right. don't rods break because they got pinched somewhere and a weak point got created yeah so when you get your rod put line on it don't go like this but now i'm controlling all Put line on it, test it out, know its limit. If that thing gets pinched in your hut, if that thing gets pinched in your car door, if that thing hits the table, I've created a weak point. Now it's not cylindrical anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to break. These are fragile. There's no rods other than ugly sticks going to take the abuse, especially ice fishing in your hut and a sledge going like this. You don't have a rod case, you're a bucket kind of guy to put it in the bucket. Yeah, those rods aren't going on. No, it doesn't matter. They don't matter. Yeah. Um, so rods don't break because of the blank or the marksman, the, the quality. Rods break mostly because of the user. And I've been there, I broke rep pile of rods back then. I go back to the, this thing is junk, blah, 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 blah. Realistically, it's yeah. my fault. Some some rods are definitely more prone to breaking than others. Some of them are more hardy than others, but you're right. If a rod's gonna break because of a manufacturer, it's either the whole all the rods are gonna pretty much break yeah. in the whole lineup, or it's gonna break in the first five minutes of you. You broke the right McGill. I broke the right McGill, but it was my fault. I'm <laughs> really good at it because I was a bonehead. Yeah. I, I mean was an idiot. <laughs> and I lost a big lake trope because of it. <laughs> so what happened? I broke a rod. I broke it because I listened to Josh. I'm blaming Josh. I'm about surprised on that one. We were moving from 
here to there and we left the rods in the bottom of the sled without take putting them in the rod case so and who was driving it oh good old joshy oh for sure yeah and then and then i there's uh, no tow bar i, I know <laughs> the, the pin on my tow bar is like like this now <laughs> oh you use your tow bar yeah yeah you, what you, would you look at i'll do it the, the, the back rail of the <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my God>. sled <laughs> But yeah, anyways, um, and then we, I was jigging with my, with my crankbait and every time I jig, I was like, am I hitting the, the tarp? <laughs> I look at my tip every time I jig, it just goes, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I was like, oh crap. And then you know what I did? I had electrical tape, right? So you taped it. So I went, oh. I said, okay, I'm just going to tape it back, right? So taping it back. And good old Josh, he's trying to play with a fish on the bottom with his drifter, right? And then the fish decides that he doesn't want to play with the, he want, he doesn't, he's done playing with the little toys and he wants to go up and hit my crankbait, right? So the fish shoots up at my crankbait. I look down with the piece of tape hanging off my rod, get two cranks in and just bowls me over and starts running, right? So I, I fought it for a bit like that. And they're like, we got to get the tape off your rod. I'm like, don't, don't touch the tape. Just don't touch it. Let me fight it. I will walk backwards if I have to, right? And it's at the hole, right? I'm like, guys, the fish is at the hole. And then they grab the tape and start trying to like cut it oh, off. I'm no. like, no, no, no. Punk. The crankbait comes out, almost smokes Isabella in the face. It was, Smoke a, good marks. Time. It was a great time. <laughs> it was a good time. But yeah, I really like those rods. I really enjoy them. It's uh once you put it's a reel on it, really it's, nice. it's once you put a reel on it and just a drifter, you put it like this, and it'll it'll come back up and it would be a great rod for a drifter. You get so much more feel, so much more control. Oh, it's so light. Like, you, you can't judge those unless you got them in your hand. So we're talking about doing pre-orders, specials. If you're interested in getting those rods, they're doing a pre-order. Message me on Instagram. Let me know how many you want, which one you want, the 42 or the 40. They're both medium action. You don't need heavier than medium action. How are those guys for jigging? Amazing. Amazing. They're big enough to let, you know, your knot go through and some eyes go through. I mean, and they're they're solid guys, man. They're not cheap. Those, those don't break easy. And you got to see the amount of, I don't know if you guys can see, but the amount of, resin that's on each guy they don't screw around no no will doesn't screw around i mean the guide stuff he stops here the guide stops here the length of the guide stops here and he keeps going all the way through here i mean it's no joke no joke no um so yeah we went out saturday we can go out today no, today was, it would have been a write off. Even my friends were asking me, should I go out today? I'm like, you can't, but you gotta be crazier than me. Yeah. I wanted to go to Johnson's Beach and like, oh, good lord. <laughs> Johnson's Beach is a great place to go today if you want to pick up broken ice huts. Yeah. No, uh, no, I wasn't going to go today, but yesterday was really good. We caught a lot of white fish. Uh, we had three, I had three lake trout on. I lost two of them, landed one. Uh, one of them was really small, probably like six pounds, maybe smaller. Really? Eh? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a uh, and the drifter's still killing it, man. <laughs> That's what the uh, I hear it a lot of Cabells, man. That's the guys are using them, the guys are catching fish on them. It's not just guys going in that are like hyped about it, right? It's works. It works, right? And that's what I found too. Because at first I was like Sebastian, it's like oh, we dig, right? Yeah. And then I went out with you and you know, just a crap out of me a bit. And I'm like, just give me one of these things. It works. Like I find they want to eat it more than other baits. They really want to eat that thing. Right? Yeah. It's uh if they're eating gobies, I mean you can have it on top. Uh, Matt Campbell wasn't far from us. And uh I went up to him and as I talked to him. He had the drifter foot off bottom. Fish came up. He just left it there. Yeah, and ate it. Fish. Yeah, right away. It's a it's a killer bait, man. 
it's a killer bait. It works. I mean, Peter doesn't want to listen to me. I keep asking for a custom color, <laughs> but one day just put more black flag on <laughs> <laughs> bigger, not small ones. Yeah, bigger black flag. I want yeah. big black flakes. So, so what I've been doing with mine is I put a. I don't know. Well, we talked about it last podcast. Did we? Yeah. On the drifter, I did. I, I did a drawing and did you? I put. That's what I've been doing with mine. Hmm. Um, that's the, you, every goby I got puked up. They're white because they've been digested, but you can still see those black you can spots. See, see the bl- yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. You can see those big black spots. So a good goby replica is actually that Thule perch from Dewey. Oh man. man, I don't get it. Like they screw. I don't know. I don't know what a Thule perch looks like, but they nailed the goby. But right now. From now on, when you go out, like you gotta have a lip gloss on. Well, yeah, honestly, on Wednesday, like this is the only thing I caught fish on. Now I wasn't. It got. You took out white white it, fish on it. Yeah, no, it, it choked it. No, no, I agree for sure. I, I wasn't really. I kind of wanted the other guys to be catching white fish because I didn't really care too much. I was. Yeah. I was trying to hook a laker. I hooked a bunch of freaking white fish on a crankbait, man. No, no, they choke they, it. They, and like ten feet off bottom, they oh, would yeah. shoot up past. Isabella's or Josh's bait oh, yeah. and smoked my crank bait. They're they're they were getting mad on the drop too, eh? Yeah, I caught a lot of fish on the drop. Yeah. I would open up my bail, go down, just go like, over. Stop. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, they just choked, right? Yeah. Unbelievable. And and there's no way that bait that bait fits in their mouth. No, they're, they're still just, gonna try. Yeah, oh for sure. hundred percent. Right now, as of now, like when you go out, you don't have a lipless on. Don't be silly. It's lipless season right now. What what should we call it? Lipper season. Lipper season? Lipper season. Lipper? Lipum. Like li- like leprosy? Is no, that what you're saying? Like li- yeah. leper? Leprosy? Lipless. I don't know. I'm trying oh, to okay. find a word like monk monk. Like mo- creating a new word. It's hard to find a good lipless kind of thing, too. Um like I like the duos; they're hard to find. You got you can get them at apps, but people don't realize. Like, sure, duos is giving me some product. Mm-hmm. You know, I represent mm-hmm. them. But that was my choice to go towards a company like that. Yes, then yeah. approach me. That lipless outclass any other lipless out there. Any other, it swims on the way down. I like, yeah, I it's really thin. The rattles is not like, yeah, feel like they, they got, got it. They got it right. They got it. They, they got a four inch hook on now. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh huh. It's on its way here from Japan. Japan. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's big, eh? It's like yeah, that's a big crankbait. Oh well, you saw a big goby that like jumped yeah, up. Yeah, sure. I, you know, they don't make the freaking juice color anymore though. You gotta what slap those Japanese guys, man. Konnichiwa! They, they send me the Tennessee shack. They don't. They don't know more Tennessee Is shad. that what you caught them on? I think. No, I don't own any Tennessee shad duos, but I found another one. I went to Bass Pro Shops and I was walking through. I was like, okay, none of these. None of these are Tennessee shad. And so down, it wasn't a li- uh, down, duo slip list? I caught a few on the duo slip list. The duo? What, what, what tulip, tuli perch? The tuli perch, yeah. I, I caught a few on the tuli perch in yeah. the afternoon, but in the morning when I first got there, I got these little crankbaits. I, they were your, they're Yozuri. Oh, yeah, like, they're good. They're good. And, I like them. and I found them. I was walking through Bass Pro. I was like, oh, none of these crankbaits. I, I've, also, I've seen all these crankbaits before. I go yeah. down there, I'm like, huh, what's that? And good little, shad good, color? good little Joey T. He's going to be the only one who knows, knows what color it is. It's like a Tennessee shad color. Apparently, he special ordered them into into Bass Pro Shops. Nico went. Joe special ordered all these into into Bass into here, but then he didn't pick them up. So I went, hmm. And I bought three of them, and I wish I would have bought the whole pack. Oh yeah, they were so. There you go, Yazuri. Lipless. It doesn't sink as fast though. No, it's not. It's not nearly. It's not nearly as nice of a crankbait as the um as the duo. It's a lot noisier too. It's not like stupid noisy. Not like. You know, not like an OG like Bill Lewis rattle trap where you can like it's like rattling in the <laughs> air. Like as soon as you start reeling, you can hear it. But it's like 
20 feet down, you hear it like 20 feet down, I'm fishing it, I can hear it. Oh, so yes. Yeah. But like I can hear it. I mean, pretty good. Where I was set up this weekend was definitely not a feeding area. It was more of a highway that we talked about. A lot of fish came through, did not care what you had down there, they're just swimming through. But when that feeding window was on, I mean, you know, you didn't have enough rods down there to catch them all. No, for sure. Yeah. Um, re reading some of the comments yet. Have you caught a white fish on the Z Vibre yet? I haven't tried. I haven't tried. I want to. I gotta make that a mission. It's a mini lipless, man. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried. Oh, Josh, you give me shit for giving away all the secrets. Don't worry, Josh. I made sure I bought all the duos. And I don't think anybody's finding those duos. <laughs> 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 you got some comments here that you guys can see. Jamie, you tell, tell us what happened, man. Why are you saying that? So, have you seen, you guys, we'll see you guys on the Lakes and Co message board. We got to talk about it, man. You, you well, seen I'm, some, not, I'm not on the Lakes and Co message Some of the guys talking about the other guys mm -hmm. and and some of the fishing drama. The fishing industry is so small, but it's full of drama. It's full of drama, and that's what I tell guys. That's what I tell a lot of people. Because there's there's a lot of I, I know I know I got a few people that are into fishing that aren't really into fishing like me and you, right? Yeah. A lot of them are like, I want to be into fishing like you. But you like me and you, right? Yeah. I tell them, listen, you want to be into fishing like me and you, you want it, you want it. I shouldn't say anything, but no, 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 no. Listen, it's listen. Tough. It, it's tough. It, it's hard. Keep keep going or you're sad. Yeah, it, it's if you don't want drama and fishing, you can't make friends. It's as sad as it is, but it's kind of true. It, it's, it's a sad as well you know it's it's you our generation it yeah it's our, my generation not yeah. yours my generation a 30 year old where don't worry we'll come around no there's not you i'm talking my generation yeah. there's a sense of loyalty and valor gone okay when you have an understanding with somebody and you guys split up mm -hmm. although i don't like you what we shared should be valored and honored it should be sacred yeah yeah i mean i gave you but and, and here's the thing you go out there and you spend 40 hours on the lake let's say this year mm -hmm. and you found this boulder now this boulder makes it not that big no i'm sure many people know about it but you spend gas you spent your time you broke equipment mm -hmm. to be there your time no for sure would you share that boulder with everybody else no because when you do next time you want to go there it's empty there's nothing there because everybody it hit it wasteless it is useless spending all that time and effort getting there so that's how guys who fish tournaments that's why we see it like this yeah uh, i don't own the lake you don't own the lake definitely not I find a wreck, I tell you, I tell somebody else, mm -hmm. that's it. Right? Now, if I know you for a fact that if anything happens between us, I know that you have honor and valor that you'll never be like despiteful and share that information. No, for yourself. sure. You keep not. it for yourself and you'd be like, you know what? Sebastian's got a tournament this weekend. I'm not going to hit it. Yeah. And it'd be the same thing. But I've even buddies that I fished with, I fished a tournament with, I'm not going to say any names, I fished a tournament with, the first day we didn't do good, uh, we had half a limit, and I had to go to uh, Kevin's funeral at 11 yeah. o'clock. He doesn't know the lake as much as I do. Yeah. And it was a tough day. We had, a we had big fish in a day, a big fish in a tournament too. Yeah. And the second half with him, we had a killer bag. Um, we also had a big fish that got off class last lot. Anyways, we had a killer bag. And I wish I could have stayed with him the first time I could. And the next weekend, I got a, a message saying, hey, do you mind if I fish with this guy, that tournament on, 
on Cooch again. Mm. I said, well, that guy I compete with him in, in, in CSFL. I, mm. And he's not from around here. I'd rather you don't take him to my spot. And that guy blew up on me. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. I would have found that spot if I wasn't with you. Yeah. In a hundred hours. Yeah. If he spent as much time on the lake as I did. And you know what? I didn't respond to him. He messaged me back the day before the He's like, I know where you're coming from. I didn't see it like that. You know, this is fishing. And, and, and the guy has been in the Army forever, man. He's got valor and honor. You know, he, he saw a light, and he's like, yeah, he's right. Mm-hmm. You know? But in the fishing industry, you have small groups that mm-hmm. share information. And we're not trying to be rude here with the don't make friends thing. but No, no. Like, make it's, friends, it's, yeah, but for sure. you will get burnt. Well, we've all been burnt. He's been burnt. I've been burnt. And then that's where you realize your your circle gets tighter. Yeah. But when you go back to the guys on Lake Simcoe, let's go back there. Yeah. A lot of people are getting upset this year. More vocal. Those forums are cluttered with people mm-hmm. complaining. We're also in a position right now to really voice our opinion more than ever. Well, right? I'm not going to get into that. But. Here's the thing. I do guide. I pay thousands of dollars to get commercial insurance. You need commercial insurance yeah, to be or else you're a scam artist. You're talking four to five thousand dollars of insurance costs a year. That's what I'm paying. I take customers with me. And when I say customers, my other job, I take I do guide when I can. And in Canada there's no there's nothing that says you should be a guide. Um, you, there's no course for it, and you go into USA. You got your, you got to do your first aid. You got to do your your guide course, survival course, and uh, boating course for guiding. Those are all required. There's no so any muk muk here can op- say I'm a guide. I'm gonna charge you two hundred bucks. You come on my sled. If something happens, you sue that guy. He's got no money, so he's got no worry, no worries, mm-hmm. right? But to me, I got stuff to lose. So I got to insure myself properly and be respectful. You can ask anybody who's been with me and I tell them if it's on fire, you want to keep your limit, you catch it, you're, you're going to keep stockfish. Mm-hmm. If you're having, if we're having issues, no problem. You can keep your two white fish. Yeah. And I tell them, I, I want you to release the lake trout. Yes. No. And, sure. the, and if you don't like it, go with, go with buddy. Yeah. To me, there's plenty of whitefish. It's it's a very good fishery for whitefish. The lake trout's on decline from what I see. So the guys that are coming with me, you want to keep a lake trout, go with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Bass fishing. When I take guys bass fishing, I do get guys who want to keep bass. And my rule is anything over three pounds is going back. We caught 50 bass. They're all three pounders. You want to catch a lot of three pounders, you're not keeping one. It's if we're fishing on Lake Simcoe, you're not keeping big fish in my boat. No, straight up. Same with pike. You want to keep pike, you're not keeping a big one. No, get a replica. Yeah, you don't like it, go with somebody else. And you know, there's people that's the difference between the guys that I don't make a living out of this. I do it as a side business, I report it to government, I charge a lot more than these other guys. To me, you guys want to know it's $6.95. You get a full day with me. You get your own hut, you get your own quad, brand new quad, and fully insured. You hit your head, your kid slips on the ice, you can sue me all you want, no problem. And at the end of the day, I gotta pay the gas, I gotta pay my time, and I gotta give half of it to the government. Yeah, I have to. I have to. That's the way it works. I don't like the government, but you gotta do it legit, right? I got another job on the side. Uh, that's where a lot of guys get pissed off. They see guys, guys, and we know what they do. They give their fish away at the end of the trip. Yeah. The guy will keep two when he's on shore. Nobody got caught him. Here's my two fish. There's no way, buddy, that you go out every day because you have no job other than guiding. That you eat two white fish a day. You don't. Your yeah. possession limit is two. If you see those guys and they always have two fish on their end. There's no way. There's just no way. That means you'd be eating fish for breakfast, lunch, snacks, dinner. You're literally only eating fish. I mean, it's straight up. 
you know, guys can put two and two together where there's smoke, there's fire. And I, I get where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. You know? No, for sure. It's, it's, it's another thing is that it, think about the spots you're really fishing, right? How many whitefish do you think you marked on Saturday? Oh, I don't know. 30? 30. Okay. That's a guy like that number. Yeah. That's a good number. Yeah. So if we went out there and we had four guys guiding, yeah, took four guys out there, how many days would it take to pretty much outfish that? Oh, for sure. Hole. If we all if we kept our two whitefish every time. One hundred percent. I mean, not very long, man. Luckily, the whitefish, with the pressure the lake has been getting, the whitefish fishery is amazing. It's been it's really. really I'm going to tell you what hurts lake trout fishing more than anything. Well, you know where I'm going with this. I mean, lake trout are a cold water species. You do not catch them shallow in the summer for one reason: it is too hot for them. Anything about 50 Fahrenheit is too hot for them. 60, they can't stay in 60 for too long. They will die. 70, a few minutes maybe, they are a cold water species. What's hurting the lake trout population of Lake Simcoe is the guys guiding in August and pounding on those fish deep and bringing them back. I'm sorry, man. It's the truth. Just like hey, that, that that goes towards me too. Just like the guys fishing tournament and keeping fish in their live well in August. In, <laughs> no, not in August, in the fall. Oh, in the fall. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. The risk of a fish dying from I honestly that's one thing that bothers me a lot. And, and we still do it. Like we, we I, it's if we're, if we're critical, but yeah. I'm just highlighting it. No, I'm I not agree. telling the guys in August to stop. No, no. But I it is what it is. Yeah. That There's fish. A lot of Fighting through the boat because the boat's not stopping either. Yeah, a picture back in the water, man. There's a lot of literature on that too for the lake trip, bringing the lake trip from the depths in the summer, stuff like that. It's really not good for them. No, bass is the same thing. Like in the fall, you don't want you don't want to sound. I don't want to sound hypocritical, but because we, we did it too. Like when we first started fishing, go out there in in the fall. Oh, I didn't live well. Catch a bunch, don't do that catch, anymore, catch, a, catch a bunch of big bass, put them in a live well, and fucking fizz them and release them at the end of the day. No, that's terrible for the fish. Yeah. We still see guys out there all the time, still doing that, and they're guys that have been fishing for friggin' ten and years. And they have no man. clue how to fizz them. You go behind them, and it's like you have to fizz. You literally, them. have to follow the boat and fizz all their friggin' fish. Man. It's I've, uh, seen, I've seen guys that have it's surprised. negative pressure. Is what I see. Because you, you see guys in, in like tipping boat launch in the fall. You, you, there's a bunch of guys fishing on shore. There's they, always they, bass boats. They, they see bass boats and they dump all their fish and they see them floating. The guys on shore, shore think all the guys in the bass boats are killing fish. And but that's a miseducation, right? right? We've been there. We it's true. We do it. Yeah. Fish. No, it's true. I mean, we were the same way. And I'm willing if you're to passionate, that. you're putting money into the sport and you're releasing those fish, you should educate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? It's the people that are like I said. We've been fishing for ten years, and they have no clue they about have fishing no bass. Clue, clue, you know. They think they took a picture and released it right away. It's going to help them. You got to, you got to stay on that fish for a good minute. It might come back a minute later. You no, know, and if you're if you're drifting one side and you're gone, you're not going to see that fish. You're going to see a seagull picking his eyes out. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late. You might not eat it at that point. Yeah, um, you know it's. Another fish that's very susceptible to pressure is crappies. Oh, for sure. I think in the winter, guys who keep crappies are doing so much damage. Excessively keep them because the limits on them are pretty ridiculous. That's crazy, man. It's insane. What's it, 25? Yeah, something like that. You keep 25 crappies in a day, you're a douchebag, straight up. That's, that's a lot of fish. Straight up. Hey, even if they're nine inches straight up, but it's a lot of fish, man. Yeah. What are you gonna do with those fish? Yeah, exactly. You need six or eight. You want to feed your family maybe ten. You keep twenty-five. What's wrong with you? You want to eat freezer burnt crappy in two months? Saying, "Oh, it's the best crappy ever." There's freaking frost on it. There you go. Scrape it off with a knife. Like same with the perch. 
Yeah, perch is the same way. I don't know. A lot of guys like the perch, man. The lake's not far for anybody else, man. Even if it's two hours away. Yeah. You go perch, freaking drop the lake, catch them to fresh. You don't need 50. That's crazy. 50 and 100 possession limit. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I'm trying to think with myself. Let's say you get a wife, you get two kids, they don't want perch. I mean, how many do you keep? Maybe 20? 20 is going to feed a lot of, a lot of, no, or you keep it 50 and you, you get 30 freezer burnt in two months. <laughs> it's true though. Like you're not going to eat perch, perch, perch out today. No. That's just sure. my, guys, that's just my, the way I see things. You know, there's with the YouTube, with the electronics, with the social media, the lake has more pressure than it had two years ago. And two years ago, the lake had more pressure than it had two years before. It's only going to get worse. It's easier to catch those fish now. You got to be a little bit conservative on the one side. It's true. I mean, yeah. Don't you think? I mean, you got look. Look what happened to Lake Scuba. It's a small lake. It got mm -hmm. devastated. The walleyes are completely gone out of that lake. Try to find a decent crappie in there. Yeah. Unless you live there. For I sure. mean, try to have a good day crappie fishing there in the winter. I mean, you have to go for a week to have one day of good crappie fishing. I mean, you got to be a bit conservative. You can't be keeping your limit every time. You're going to meet me, Hunter. I mean, it's cheaper, honestly. I want to eat fish. I live on Simcoe. It's cheaper to me, for me to go to the grocery store and buy a rainbow trout fillet <laughs> or then go on the lake. True. It's true, though. Yeah. It's it's 100% true. It's so much cheaper. That's just my take on it. Yeah. That's just my take on it. So yeah, that's where I think the lake trout fisheries are in. It's the, the they're getting a lot more pressure in the summer. Yeah, I, I agree. That's it's probably a combination of a lot of things. I wonder I wonder how the fatality rate through the ice is as well. Ice fishing? Mm -hmm. I think I think that white fish that are coming from deep is the fatality rate is high. I Even agree. if you release it, because yeah. they'll come back up. And I'll float under the ice, um, especially white fish, lake trout, not so much, but especially white fish. And if the fish is bleeding because you grabbed it by the gills, you didn't, you didn't cut open a wound, you didn't cut open its throat. You put it back in the water, the water pressure will stop that bleeding mm -hmm. straight up. That's why a lot of these fish, although you hook them in the lip, they're bleeding here. Because there's no pressure to keep that blood in their gills anymore. Straight. It's true though. Same thing. You catch a bass in the fall, they're so full of fat. They're so fat. You catch one up in the upper, it's bleeding there like crazy. You know why it's bleeding? It's bleeding because it's outside. There's no pressure on it. Yeah. Now we're going to take deep. If you're on the moon and you slit your wrist, there's less pressure up there, so the blood is going to come out much quicker. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. That's that's the way I see it. You know, you see a fish that bleeds, put him back in the water, put pressure on it, he'll be fine. He'll go chill on bottom, he'll make more blood. You know? I mean, those fish are strong. They lived in the wild for a long time. We got we to gotta see some of the questions we got. Uh, Salmon season. Yeah. Salmon season, steelhead season, the rivers are. Yeah, that actually works, actually. Laughing loon. Can of cola, that's, that's a bass fisherman trick. Well, maybe not bad. I shouldn't say that, but to stop bleeding. Yeah. Moderation and common sense goes a long way when you're, you're keeping fish. I mean, I hate to see it, but I, I think a lot of these fish that are kept go to waste. Yeah, like I, I not, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of them are forgotten. They stay in the fridge. Um, what else? What else are you seeing? As far as poaching goes, <laughs> not as far as poaching. I think, I think, I think when they catch somebody, where they're fishing with a lot of license i mean stuff like that can happen but if you keep in fish out of license it should be posted publicly yeah publicly 
just yeah it, i don't know it, it's tough it, it's really tough because it when that whole debacle was that debacle was happening on the leaks and go message board and guys were literally incriminating themselves on the facebook saying oh i've given my fish on the ice all the time mm -hmm. i've breaking the law literally yeah oh nobody's gonna see it well, who cares it's two more white fish hey like, man i'm gonna tell you you know what these guys look like <laughs> Fluorescent jacket construction. You know, it's for sure. One time someone came into work one day wearing a pair of camel pajama pants and a fluorescent um, construction vest. You know those jackets, they're fluorescent with their orange stripes yeah. on them. Same with the pants are blue and they got like you see a guy like yeah, that. Yeah. But he's keeping his limit, man. And he's then so his limit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so do you guys have any questions you'd like us to answer what we're going to the, into the season? You know what, what's crazy that I saw now on water feet? I learned so much with those videos. I was interesting that trout that went on the ground, smacked up the ground. But what do you think? Listen, got a question. we got, we got, I got, I had the, the underwater camera. The current would go this way. And then it would go this way, and then it would be heavy this way. Heavy. People don't realize how much current is in that bowl right there. Yeah. It's dictated by a lot of stuff, man. And when the current goes one way steady, those fish are always going one way. Whether it's this way, this way, this way. When the current's funky like this, because you see it with camera, those fish are coming everywhere. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. What was your question? You know, my question is, yeah, you're gonna laugh at me. What do you think the gobies do in the winter? That's a huge part of where those where those trout and whitefish are, man. A lot of those gobies, and you and I did it when we went out. Remember, we went super shallow. Mm -hmm. We did we dug the hole. Yes, that spot in the summer is loaded with gobies. Yeah, loaded with gobies, loaded with crayfish. You know what those fish are doing? I mean, I put the drone on the water. What do you think the temperature is in 40 feet of water? In Celsius. Feet. In Celsius. Oh, in Celsius? Oh, I, I honestly, I probably wouldn't know in Celsius. Okay, in Fahrenheit. What do you think it is in Fahrenheit? I'm going to get my phone. 30, what do you guys think? 32. What do you guys think in, 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 in 35 to 40 feet of water right now, if you go out there, what the temperature is? Put it in Fahrenheit and Celsius. I'll let you know right now. Uh, I got it in Celsius. My drone will tell me. It tells me the pressure it has, and it tells you the exact temperature, like to the point, point seven or point nine. Uh, is it at the bottom of the lake? Take a guess. Thirty-two. Take a guess. You're you're far off. Oh, oh, pardon me. You're far off. You guys are far off. If below the ice, I'm gonna tell you, it's between 29 Fahrenheit and 32 Fahrenheit. That water is below freezing. It should freeze, but it doesn't yeah. freeze. The bottom, you guys, you guys are far. 42. Yeah. 42 to 45 Fahrenheit. Yeah. It doesn't change. It's a big difference, man. When you live outside. When you live outside, like the cats or the rabbits or the squirrels, why do you think they go by your truck? Why do you think that cat's under your truck? That two degree difference is everything, man. Yeah. Because everything. It doesn't change that much if you think about it a year round. Well, it's it's still everything to those fish. For sure. You know, same with the goby, same with the crayfish, man. If they can save two Fahrenheit, they'll go to it. Mm -hmm. You know? And where those fish are going is where those fish are going to eat. But and yeah, you know why that spot was good where you caught those bourbon and when I caught those lake trout? Why is that? Because it's a clear bottom and I think it warms up quicker. Warms up quicker. Warms up quicker. It's the sun sense. hits that real quick. You know, and if it's dark, it absorbs the light real quick. That's just my that's just my train of thought. Doesn't mean it's right. No, 
No, I, these are the sea bass opinion. You guys can tell me to fuck myself. That's fine. You know, doesn't mean I'm right. That's just the way I see things. Try to try to dig deeper into this. Hey, well, hold on. Time, time out. Where's my phone? Where's my phone. We got winners. We're about twenty-five days late. Told you I'd pick a winner for uh, the funniest comment. Yeah. Oh, uh, pick up yours. Mine. Yeah. I did a terrible job picking the funniest comment. Oh, so you can blame this guy. I picked one. He picked one. Yeah. You're gonna get a set the hook price back delivered to your house. You need if you're the winner. Message me on Instagram. Don't add me to Facebook. I don't have anybody Facebook. Add me on Instagram. See you guys outdoor. Send me a private message. I try to answer everybody. There you go. How do I do this? There we go. Okay, so, who do you got? I got Bass Monkey Fishing. What do you say? He said, I'll let, I'll let you guys read it. No, you gotta read it. I gotta read it. He said, You're a natural Julia Child. Keep up the cooking vids. So you got called Julia Child. Good old uh, French French cooking pioneer, even though I don't think she was French. Um, we had Jeff Lonsbury. I probably messed up your name, bud. You, <laughs> on one of my videos where I was doing a, a cooking video for, and I was guiding, I was always referring it, 10 being that's what you would ask for in Death Row. So we said, welcome to the Death Row cooking show. That one's good. That, yeah, is. that gives you a price pack from Set the Hook. So both of you guys mentioned me on Instagram. So we're doing the giveaway winners. We're about 25 days late. Guys, my life is busy. I have a full-time job. I need to go film, edit videos. I edited a video for four hours today, putting all the footage together, editing more videos. Super busy. I'm sorry I don't pick winners right away. But 25 days later is better than never. There you go. That's it's the way a more it. professional show now. It's a bachelor more college shirt. So, yeah, from now on, everything's going to be more professional. It's, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been busy, man. Not going to lie. I'm, I'm a bit burnt out on oh, all this. Yeah, you're, you're go, go, go all the time. It's, I'm a bit burnt out now. It's like, okay. And this week, I'm working hard. Uh, no fishing, no days off, and then the next week I get the, the week off. You think I'd relax and do something else? Yeah, I'm guiding for eight days straight. Good lord! So I gotta take a Friday and then all week, eight days straight guiding. Eight days straight, eh? What, what week's that? Uh, the first week of March, that's the bowl. Okay, so from the then I'm guiding from the second to that the following Sunday. Oh shit! Eh? Well, I'll probably be up there too. So yeah. If you guys need help, I'm sure we can divide and conquer. Yeah. At that at that point, we can hopefully the lake trout fishing will be hot. Um. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I think, and I think I'm going to keep a lot of the footage for next fall. And just post it all next and fall. Just post it all next fall when it's the prime season. You gotta still post a few videos. Yeah, I did. I mean, the video I posted today, I think, was great. I think it was awesome. Man. That lake trout. That's that's what I like. Eh? That's I cannot post a video anymore without the underwater footage. The underwater footage is definitely neat. For sure. Nobody wants to see again how good fish landed. There's a lot of good fish landing if you look up. No, but I mean, it's once you've done the underwater footage. That's to me not about catching that fish. It's about catching it on the water footage. Mm -hmm. I get a two hour window in my day with that camera, like an hour and 45 minutes I'll last underwater where I can hook a fish. And if I do, when I come home and the angle is perfect, money, money. Yeah. Like fish and lake trout. Once he's asking what happened to my drill, the K drill, uh, I had fish a lot and it got a lot of snow in it and I think I toasted it. My walkie five year warranty, I walked into the store, they gave me another one, tip top and blue. There you go. And I want to try the cement mixer. I bought a refurbished cement mixer, big mistake. Why? Well, it's acting up, man. Yeah, like yeah, but it's, when it works, I mean, 
Yeah, you crank her up. The drill's like, great. You crank her up to like four max settings. Uh, it's a nice auger. It's a nice auger. Yeah. It's a nice auger. You got two animals. It's legit. It doesn't go as fast as a drill. It doesn't try to kill itself. It just. It's uh. It's better to drill holes with the holes too. It's got more torque, mm -hmm. slower. So you can control better. Yeah, it, have you been? You weren't out today, eh? I wonder how the ice is going to be after this win. Today, I oh, went no. out. Did you? No. 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 Okay. Nah, the ice will be fine. Think so? You think it's going to open up any of the cracks? No, it'll. It won't open them up. It'll make ice melt because yeah. the ice gets to relax. So it'll go. It's got to go somewhere. Plus, so with that wind, you'll have pressure cracks. Hmm. For I'm sure. Going out, going out Tuesday. Trying to go it's out. Supposed to be uh, funny. Trying to go out uh, Thursday as well. Should use Makita. Should use Makita. You I'm going to tell you one thing. That K drill, I would only run a Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Give it another year. The, the, I don't know, because I don't know much. Where do you get service of Makita up here? Yeah, Milwaukee's got the market. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know any. I don't know much about power drill, so maybe I, my, my, like the my, lights that you see back here, are powered by Milwaukee. My vacuum's powered by Milwaukee. Everything works with the drill. Like, I'm not gonna try anything. I'm sorry. I should. Yeah, my 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 thing. One thing that I'm I worry about with the other drills is that I trust the Milwaukee battery. In cold temperatures, yeah, yeah, for down 100%. to minus fifteen, minus twenty. I don't, oh, I've I don't had it minus twenty. We've had it minus, minus thirty. You don't, I don't bring don't it in the care. hot, right? It might kill it a little bit quicker. But what other, like, if I go out there and I buy a rigid, I'm, 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 I'm taking that battery and it's coming in the hot with me because I'm not trusting that thing out there in the cold, right? But I could be wrong. They could be, they could be built for the cold as well. But so he. So I did I tell you what happened this weekend? So we're fishing and I got I went and seen Josh. He's he was pretty far, probably like almost 150 meters from me. And we're fishing a flat, it's not a community hole, it's just just one flat. And literally a group of like six to eight sleds came by. One between me and Ono, me and Ono were pretty close. Mm -hmm. Like literally a small street in between. Yeah. They rode in between. They did a U-turn. And literally 30 feet behind my left, there was eight snowmobile all with their and looking at their graph. It's just again, I don't own the lake. But I would never do that to somebody that's fishing. Even when community all if I get close to somebody, I turn my sled. They stayed there for five minutes. I was on YouTube live. I got pissed. So you know what? I walked towards them. The minute I walked towards them, I started pissing in front of them. I mean, man, that's the trick. I mean, I, I'm pissing. Whatever. They left. They literally went 200 feet away, and all set up over there. None of them. None of them had grass, except yeah. maybe one guy. And all they did is this. They're snagging, but I don't know if they caught anything. The minute Josh packed up his hut, two guys went to it, and Josh was not even done packing. So Josh was like, "What the hell, man?" No, he's probably ready to fight him. No, but <laughs> just <laughs> we had guys roll up on us on Wednesday. I thought they were following us. Josh thought they were following us. We went to a spot and they showed up. They were pretty. They were a respectful distance. What wasn't respectful is the fact that when we stopped, they stopped. And then when we started going again, they started going again. So I'm like, that's interesting. But I don't know. I'm not saying they're following us. It might have been a coincidence, but but I remember walking one time. I was walking to Longshore when I was walking. And we went out. It was dark and still. It was me and two other guys were three. We were you might have been with us. Oh, it was my Ryan. I was with Ryan. Mm -hmm. And we were walking. It was dark. And we stopped. And this old guy was behind us. And he's like, Oh, I'm just following you guys. I don't know where to go. 
And I looked at him, I said, well, we kind of want to fish for all night. And he just kept pawing us. I said, all right, Brian, watch this. He's like literally 20 feet behind. I'm going to drill a hole here. I'm stopping here. I made, I made it seem like I was setting my hut. He was setting his hut literally 30 feet away from me. And by the time he, done, he was done setting his hut, I popped my hut up and I left. I mean, it's just, to me, I would rather catch less fish around nobody than catch 20 fish around. I, other people. I don't like this. It's just fun. You want it? Enjoy the outdoors. That's the thing. I live more in a town where it's not Toronto. Where it's not Toronto. You know what I mean? I don't want. I want to enjoy the outdoors, man. When I walk out of my hut, I want to see snow. I want to see thirty huts. Mm -hmm. It's not fun, man. Not fun. And it's getting, you know. I, I guess people are getting more slight and all that stuff. It's just respectful stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'd rather try a new spot and go to a community hole in the where I can catch fish. Mm -hmm. It's it's not, I'd rather not catch anything than being around 30 people. It's just not. I it's, agree. It's, it's much more silly. react, relaxing. You're not worked up when there's guys. So there's, there's, I've never really made the count. We're going deep here. What kind of ice fishermen is out there? Oh gosh. There's a meat hunter. There's a lot of meat hunters out there. Those are the guys that using gas. Gas everything that comes up the hole. Gas everything that comes up the hole. Let's go on the ice. And usually they're you see them like this. Have them ten, fish have ten white fish in their freezer. Yeah. No. But there's the meat hunters. There's the guy that's trying to learn. And we've all been there. That's still me. Uh, and then there's People that enjoy taking a picture, releasing it, being conservative. Although keeping a few fish here and there was fine. Mm -hmm. What else a kind of ice fisherman is, a, is out there? There's the ice fisherman that likes to get smashed on the ice. Yeah. Smashed, yeah. having a good old time, getting away from the wife, right? As long as you pick up your trash when you're gone, yeah, it's fine. You got, you got, you think. Same kind of group of people. You got the Googans who just want to go out there and go fishing. No, no ice. You know, no, no, no graph or anything. They just go out there and never catch anything. And cause a ruckus. AKA have to be like a balance. <laughs> and work there. You know what's gross is they, the smokers out there. If you want leaving <laughs> butts everywhere, just pack them up, man. Well, yeah. When I did the drone out there, you could see cigarette butts on the bottom. We, yeah, you would be surprised at the amount of people that when we get things with the huts returned at Cabela's again, I don't want to represent Cabela's or anything, but the amount of people, the amount of times we get huts taken back to Cabela's that they reek of cigarettes or just reek of cigarettes. Yeah. Are you taking them back still? Sometimes it depends. Wow. Really. And it also depends what kind of person you get up at the front, too. So <laughs> be careful if you're taking them back. Some people aren't going to screw around with that. But yeah, the expert knows every hole and every shoal. I know a lot of people who claim that they know every hole and every shoal. And then they ask me to go fishing with them and they ask me where to fish. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you take them to a spot, I fished here before. I'm sure you have fished here before. Oh yeah, that's good. I hate that's, that. Oh, I fished here before. I'm gonna come back. Don't come back here. <laughs> I swear to God. You get that in tournament fishing. You fish with guys that have been in the oh, yeah. forever. Oh, for sure. And then you tell them, oh, I've fished there before. Yeah. You well, know he's never before. been there. I knew that. I knew that. Like, yeah. Just okay. keep it to yourself then. Yeah, I don't care. That's like me too. Like if I go out there and someone shows me I'm not gonna be like I fish here before. Or if I if something comes up, be like yeah, means I've been here or whatever, but I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, I've fished here before. Oh yeah, I've done that before. Every spot you go to, every time. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a that's a tournament mentality, guys. That's the tournament mentality. You can smoke. You can smoke in your hut all you want. Just don't leave them on the ice. I don't, I, don't, I don't have. I don't have a problem with smoking or anything like that. But I want to leave the cigarette butts on the ice. I do. That'd be a different. pig. That's different. You know, put put it in a plastic bag. I don't know what you got to do. Don't be a pig. Don't leave your cigarette butts on the ice. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. It's gross. That underwater or, drone, I'm going to show you. That's, that's like 
bigger garbage. Yeah, in some areas of the bottles. lake, there's more cigarette butts than freaking zebra mussels. That's bad. That's disgusting. What do you think Johnson Beach looks like? It's gross, man. Yeah, gross, disgusting. Like the bottles down there, like. Oh no, there's 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 a lot of stuff down there. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff. Um. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I've been using mud mixer. I, I enjoy that one. You like the mud mixer? Yeah. 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 It's it's uh it's steady. It drills nice. It drills and it holds nice. Um, we're reading some of the questions here. The weather's getting pretty bad. You hear the tree smashing in the window right now. I know. I think I'll probably it doesn't like the it's icy, so I'll probably drive home tonight. Yeah, you'll be fine. Bad, it won't be bad. It wasn't a bad drive up. No one will be on the there road. There you go. Okay, he dances, he throws his butt in a coffee can. There you go. Kick up, kick up. Whatever you bring with you, leave with. Take it back. Leave with. Mm-hmm. You know, your package of juicy jumbos. No one wants to see your juicy jumbo wrapper on the <laughs> fucking nice, dude. Like no one wants to see that. No. No. I mean it's 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 nice to go outside and feeling like nobody's been there before. Yeah, the forest for sure. And then you look down and there's like a Mr. Big Rapper. It's like, oh, <laughs> we got to be better, man. Yeah. We got to be better. I don't know why this mentality is of, of littering everything, not being respectful. I mean, to me, if you're littering like this and leaving cigarette butts on the ice, I mean, yeah, I can't go too deep into this one, but it's disgusting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, bring, bring an extra plastic bag, double bag your lunch on the way out. Once you're done with your lunch, you got one garbage bag and you got we one We got to keep it clean. We're using this, man. It's true. If, we, if we're all pissing in the pool, it's disgusting. It's true. That's a big pool, man. It's a pretty big pool, but there's a lot of piss in that. Yeah, there's more than that. I mean, pee, pee goes away. It's being the, but the cigarette butt, Yeah. a, a wrapper, a freshwater squid. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't even worry about the Who knows what a fresh squid. water squid is? And they don't even worry about the fresh water squid. Oh uh, man, that's water. disgusting. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's just yeah. Where I used to live when I was young is river, it's very polluted river. Yeah. You see fresh water squids everywhere. Oh good lord. Everywhere. Yeah. Apparently the Potomac and what's the other word? The Delaware is littered with them. <laughs> littered with them. Yeah, you gotta pick up your juicy jumbo wrappers, man. You can't be throwing them in the lake. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I saw a thing today on, uh, I don't know what it was. They're getting flooded down there, man. Lake Ontario said there was supposed to be 30 foot waves in, by the end, by tomorrow or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's estimated, but I believe it. It can happen. I've been in eight foot waves. Eight, seven, eight footers are the biggest I've ever been. Dude. It's it's thirty foot waves, dude. Oh, basketing! Dude, Dad, the first one just flips, flips you over, man. Then you like, go down. You gotta slow down because like, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna spear it at the bottom. The wave from the perfect storm. That's a thirty footer. Thirty footer, man. Like you're you're you're, you're, you're better to leave it in neutral and just go with them. Yeah, exactly. I really want to go. Just, just hide in the rod locker. <laughs> just aim for shore, dude. <laughs> yeah. Just, just stay in the trough of one. <laughs> Sideways. <laughs> yeah. I think going straight up at Perfect Storm style, like Mark Wahlberg, and be like, Shh. straight up. I think that's what you do right there. Yeah. It's it's the people I'm reading some comments, people that uh some of the comments like the people leaving trash behind. It's they're usually the guys overfishing the fishery and keeping everything that swims and not you know they have no regard for themselves, so why would they respect a a, a fishery or a body of water? It's not about too, being too conservative. It's just about, man, my, I want my kids to be able to. Mm-hmm. to so it's the fact, fishery, man. Respect and thinking about it, which some people don't think and some people don't have respect. You know? Yeah. Um, read some of the questions. We're going to wrap this up soon, guys. We talked about the drone. We talked about the camera. The drone videos are coming. I'm building a, a nice library of footage. And 
underwater footage on Lake Simcoe. If you do have some stuff that you'd like to be filmed with the drone, shoot it to me on Instagram. It's got to be interesting for me to come down and 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 do the footage. And don't worry, I'm not going to rape your spot. I just want cool footage. Uh, we were talking about maybe doing our salmon footage um, in the spring, doing uh, big cat channel catfish footage. I'd like to try that. Yeah. Are, are you? Uh, what we should do. Can you take a week off? Put in the water supply. You want to come to Alabama? I can take a week off. I just need to have to know pretty soon. Yeah. When a week is. Hey, I don't know if we can talk about this on the podcast. What's that? Did you get in trouble uh, helping me out with the ice fishing show? No one said anything. So. Didn't hear anything? I didn't hear from it. So uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it probably wasn't. Uh, wasn't the most polite thing for me to do but it's not it's not uh oh but it's like the guy working and getting tired go and help his buddy as a no as a that's shop. the thing too it's not like it's not like i'm technically competing right but it's different right but it doesn't matter as far as i'm concerned it's i'm not that we probably shouldn't talk about this on the camera but as, as, far, as, as far as I'm i heard concerned, some rumors i was like you know i i wasn't happy about them yeah who told you them just a little bird. Yeah. It was a little they bird. said they were upset that you worked with me at the booth. No, oh, they never said anything to me. So if they got an issue, they can come to me about it. As far as I'm concerned, I, I don't, I don't, as soon as I, again, I shouldn't say anything because I don't, they're watching, but as soon as I take off. If they fire you, uh, I'll double your salary. If, if, as soon as I take off the Cabela shirt, I don't promote Cabela's. I don't work for them anymore. Right. Yeah. No, but if, you're a fucking if, good employee. If though. someone if someone comes and I I know you personally, you. I'm telling you, I would give this guy that's how when I refer to Aaron and explain not what kind of guy he is. I could give Aaron a million dollars in a hundred dollar bill in a garbage bag. I could give it to him. I can go do my thing, come back in ten years, and the guy is so paranoid that money would be missing. He would add a hundred dollars yeah. <laughs> and then he would give it to me. That's go. how much I trust that guy. Yeah. I mean, but no, but as far as I'm concerned, there is, I, I do, I do the, me being here and saying that I work for Cabela's, yeah. it, it, it is a form of promotion, right? Yeah. I mean, they just probably don't like my allowed mouth. Well, I mean, they don't really. It's it's it, it is and it isn't right. I'm not. I don't promote Cabela's. I don't represent Cabela's. I well, you kind of do though when you soon, work. That's the thing, right? Especially I, the as, world the world we live in now. As soon as I take my shirt off, I don't represent. Yeah, but as much I, I, that's one thing that my generation, your generation, whatever I say on social media now can be held against me in twenty years. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. But if I go on a rampage crazy, I guarantee you the news is tapping on all this. Yeah. And they're taking everything. Like you saw my video where I was the, the video I showed you, the, the one I was editing. Mm -hmm. I took the knife to unbox the box. Yeah. That's what they're screenshotting this. There you crazy go. man wielding a knife. You're that's on, that's you're what like list. no, like if I I'm not crazy, I'm not gonna do any yeah. of that stuff. That's how it is. You gotta be careful. And now with social media, when you say stuff, your boss can see it. And, no, yeah, and not, not that you're like this or anything, but uh, no, I, I keep it pretty. You know, it's a uh, and next year at the ice fishing show, we're gonna do it again. And mm -hmm. you know, I want to be the guy that brings stuff that nobody has as a price that nobody has, and whether we bring more K drills. We bring those cu custom fishing rod, custom knives. Nope. I'm gonna get in trouble here. Mm -hmm. But I want people that come to me because none of the other store has it. Nobody wants to go buy what everybody else has. I know. Sure, sure, sure. Definitely. Because they will. If Canadian Tire has it, I don't want it. No disrespect no, to Canadian Tire. Sure. I don't want it. I want the exclusive limited quantities items that are hard to find that works. That's uh, like me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you, once you get into fishing hardcore, you, you, 
you know, that's what you're looking for, those niche things. That's why I like Epps a lot. Exactly, yeah. I've, I've got, you know, I can go to Canadian Tire. I Probably go too. I mean, he's the I only can... guy. The only guy carrying Otter, the full line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I want to climb, I got 15 stores I can go to. For sure. I want the art, the fine item, the, the stuff that works. See, that, that's, uh, you know, like I said, that's why I spend like, so much money at that. Right? Man, I go there and I look and, ooh, what's this duo crank It looks like a perch. Four of them into my back. Yeah. I don't go to apps and buy a friggin' G, HJ14. Everybody has them. Everybody, everybody has husky jerks. I don't need to buy another husky jerk. I want to. I've been. It's been on my mind for the longest time to start an online fishing store and a store around here. Like that can held back. It's twelve pound fluoro too thick for white fish. (laughs) No, you're fine. You're golden, dude. Uh, I I would love to start a fishing a fishing store and have. Kind of like Projay's, like that's why Projay's doing so well. Mm-hmm. Dirt, Jasper, if you're watching this, you're a little bit more expensive, but he, he he's able to be more expensive because he carries all that stuff nobody else has. When I when I went to the show, you go to that, it's that store because it's a unique item that you don't have anywhere else. When when I went to the spring fishing boat show, the only store I spent money in was Projay's because I bought things that I can't get anywhere else. You know, that he's doing it right and that's what i want to do i want to bring stuff and that, why apps a store that's on the highway that's really successful in the summer on a friday that's still alive in the winter because he's got cheaper price than anybody else and he carries the most stuff that nobody else has it's true it's true i go to app like it's like i said i go to apps and it's the my fish summer. finder my elite seven i got a better price than i would have not with anybody else for sure no it's true you go talk to corey say i don't want this now like here's the price you look at the price like holy shit everybody else has it on special mm-hmm. but it's still cheaper for the same price yeah yeah that, yeah that's the thing a lot of things daiwa stuff they undercut everybody on daiwa stuff this isn't an excellent option but uh yeah i, I was using a mud mixer day it's a mud mixer from milwaukee it's a bit heavier it's got two handles it doesn't spin as fast but it's uh it's got a lot more torque. Oh shit! One two steps. Here's a challenge for you. One weekend without duo, without a drifter, without a vibrato. I fish in the tube the whole time. Sure, challenge accepted. But who's challenging me? But, like what? Find drifter. Is it only the drifter? Yeah. Just no no drifter. Yeah. So I can pull an LB and visual the cross tail shot. <laughs> I mean she didn't really catch. I like that challenge, man. Got a few on it, but I, I like that challenge. Really You'd be surprised what it would have what I, what I would have on. I probably fish with the two the entire time. No, I tried it too this weekend. They don't really yeah, they used to like like the trout, I'm sure would still hit a tube, but yeah, I like that challenge, man. We should, uh, we should, we should, uh, I should look into it. Okay, one, two. What's the challenge? I gotta fish the whole day or until I catch a fish? You know what we should do for a, a rod, a rod arsenal update? That's actually a good idea. I think that's a, I think that's a good idea for you. But do you know what we should do? We should do a challenge. I think I think you and Steve might have used used to do it, where you can you can only catch one fish on one bait. So you can yeah, catch we one used on, to do it. Can catch we one used on to do it, but but I'm gonna take a little stab here. You fucking get to that many times. We would I do challenges, and he would get upset. I whooped his ass, so he wouldn't give me the footage of his uh, for like four times, and I got upset. Yeah, I mean, man, I am not thinking my beating, man. Yeah, it's not about who's better. It's about making footage for people to see. I'll take my leakings every time. Mm-hmm. I mean, every time we do a challenge, you win more most of the time. I'm very good at getting lucky. That wasn't supposed to sound weird, but 
It's true. It's like, I look when I fish with James. James thinks I'm the freaking best bass fisherman in the world. Because whenever I go out and fish with James, he gets I big always ones. kick his ass, man. Always. No offense to James, but I always kick his ass. So we always go and fish. He, he scratches his head. He's a great fisherman. He's a great fisherman. I always scratch his head. He's like, and he calls guys. He's like, dude, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm going to kick my ass again. I'm like, dude, it's luck. Like, it's, there's no other reason. <laughs> hey, Fisher. Every time. He would go to Simcoe and he's like, okay. He's like, I know what I know. Uh, Simcoe, right? Simcoe's a little different because I fish Simcoe a lot too. Just beat him up, throw it and on his own, on his own pattern. I <laughs> just beat him up, fishing beside him. And he's like, this is, he's, he's a good pattern fisherman. He hasn't done much uh, perch fishing this year. All right, uh, you know, I'll do a challenge with a, a bait that I've never caught a whitefish on before. How's that? Make your own jig and fish with it only. I would make my own jig if I had more time in my life. Apparently, Justin's making his own jigs. Justin who? Robinson. Oh, nice. Um. And then Fish and Terry, what's going on with you and Steve? No, we don't talk. You've made your own. We we don't talk. I mean, you've made your own jigs. You made your own hair jigs. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that. We don't talk. I just, I, I to me, I have honor and value, and and at the end of the day, if we don't agree on things, that honor and value is still honored, and it's lost by a lot of people. That stuff. Uh, yep yeah that's that's just that's just how i see it <laughs> are you guys starting to move on top of shoals i haven't moved from the top of the shoals <laughs> for like three years <laughs> no my friend i mean i fish 30 feet 25 40 you know, always around shoals on top actually we were on a flat this weekend. That's where you caught them too. Mm -hmm. But it's a flat of the shoal. It's, it's, it's a long shoal. It's a flat. It's, it's a yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a flat, really. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm just gonna take a Williams half and half over there and catch and, and track them with that, and I'll catch them with a, you know, drifter is great, but there's other baits out there too, for sure. You know. I lost the guy fishing with drifters on, on Wednesday. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. It's a late turn and ultra light. That'd be fun. It'd probably kill the lake trout, though. It would fight way too much. Oh, the ultra light? Nah, that's not fun. <laughs> but I think you would hurt the fish more now. I was going to say, I think you'd kill the fish because you'd get so tired from just running the whole time. Yeah. And you just, it'd be like an hour long fight. You'd have to sit down while you're fighting the fish. I mean, that would possibly be a rubber. I mean, that rod, which has decent backbone on it, more than the right Miguel. And that fish, when I catch it, you see it in the video. When I catch it, it comes right away. First of all, I didn't feel the bite. I had it in its mouth for three seconds, then I set the hook. And the lake trout, what they do, they'll come up. They'll just come with it, and they're like, oh, I don't know what this is. And when they realize they're hooked to the line, that's when they peel and mm -hmm. they go away. That trout, man, I, it took me 19, 21 minutes to bring in. Hell yeah. No, even like, even like the. That's why I like the butt here. The butt is only there. I, the butt is only there for when you catch a lake trout like that and she starts to go and you're getting tired and you just put it here. Now I'm chill. You can sit down, you're not going anywhere. The, the pressure's not all on my wrist. If it was here, always on my wrist. And I mean, I like fishing, but I don't want my wrist to get messed up either. So that's a lock it in right here. Tipped out my gooey. Oops, you can still fish it like this. There you go. You like the wrist setter guy. You can use that bait caster. The wrist setter. <laughs> the broken rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he fishes in, fishes in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'm not gonna lie. I actually like the idea. What? I kind of actually like his idea. <laughs> or he's like, he gets closer to it. But okay. he tried, though. It was, okay. The stupidest part was when he turned it over and he said he Oh yeah, <laughs> you lost me there, little bud. You lost me there because then when he said that, you completely contradict yeah. it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and he and he takes it. He's like, "There's no other rod on the market. I can do this." He just 
bending the crap out of it. I was like, yeah, there's only a good rod on the market that can do that. But I can do that with my ugly stick. Yeah. What a gem. And then, and then the thing is with that, and then everybody started picking on him. I kind of felt bad for him. So like, like, my grandfather that was a World War II veteran designed this rod and was just drinking. I'm like, oh, good lord. <laughs> crack, crack is a good thing. Oh, dude. Yeah. But uh, a lot of us know he's on those forums, man. It's got to slow down a little bit. For sure. That one? I mean, I don't help. I put fuel on fire. But yeah. That, that, that page that we were on there is usually pretty good. Like, it, it takes it too far sometimes, but no one really bullies except for that guy. I think it's a lot of losers on that forum that are just like, that unfiltered one. That are just, I said, I, oh, you want, oh, I don't watch the unfiltered one. No, I quit that group. No, 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 no. I did the list of it. She loves it. No, I'm, not, I'm not that one. Um, yeah, it's just it's February. A lot of guys are not catching his fish, they get jealous. I mean, I'm not a fan of those guys that get bashed, so I don't, I don't definitely don't help the cause, but you know, I, I'm reading some of the comments. You should think you should add to the rod a small sticker on a leg trap under. Well, the way those rods are laid out, you know, you'll have Will Wicked Custom Rod logo on it. And then you'll have it. One's going to be a Lake Trout Slayer, and the other one's going to be a Sea Cow Slayer. Designed for Lake Simcoe. Not designed for Sea Bass Outdoor, designed for Lake Simcoe. Mm -hmm. They're nice rods, man. I mean, it's really hard to give justice on those rods, but what else could you ask more on there? What would you like to see? Uh, that's all I want your opinion. I'm very picky with my so rod. so far what I don't these these member guys are prototype and a prototype is given to me to give feedback as to what I want to see improve. Mm -hmm. Right away when it came out of the box, I, I texted Will. I said the hook keeper, I want it here. I don't want it here. The line can't get in the way. Put it at the back. That's what Will suggested too as well. And it's gonna add color at the back. What what would you like to see? Honestly, I'll have to fish it to really see how the rod is. I really do like it. I mean, you can tell like the components on it, which that's a lot of times what sets the rod apart is the components, the shit components, the shit real seat, shit guys that are falling out, shit epoxy. That's what sets it apart, right? I, but I, really, I really do like that rod. It's got a backbone, like when you're fishing with a tube or a swim bait. Mm -hmm. That's single what you hook. want, right? It's yeah, a big single hook. You want something like that. That one piece, like, like goes unnoticed because it's got no color on it. But that one's a killer, man. I like that one. I really do. That one. That one's good. a killer, man. That's that's the white fish layer. There's no other rod like this out there, sensitivity wise. Like you can see when a rod is good, when you can look at them through like this. And I can see all the way through the last eyelid. They're all in line. Over. This is no disrespect to China. This is not a guy being paid one dollar an hour wrapping guys, not caring and never seen a, mm -hmm. what a fishing rod does. That's built by a guy in the USA with the right equipment, with passion into this. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference. What about the butt? Would you want a more cushy butt? I think that butt's perfect. Maybe a little bit bigger. I mean, Some the cork like, is high end. Uh, you can tell for sure. It's high end. end. That cork was at tip thirty foot, so that's just nitpick you said. But that that EVA man is so smooth, man. It, it's got to be good EVA. It's good EVA. It makes it so much lighter. Yeah, that's good EVA. What about how about something like a wing grip? How would you think of a feel about that? What do you mean? How about something like a wind grip? Here? What's a wind grip? Like a tennis racket handle or like the old tournament set X Cabela's rods. No, they would fall apart over time. And so these things get super dirty too. Yeah. The only thing I would have liked to see custom wise is, is a different EVA color. I like this one. It's a nice rod, man. You want to slay white fish? That's the rod, man. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, we're not gonna make much money on those. 
I'm going to try to keep the cost down. You're look, you're, we're not sure on the price range. It's definitely going to be a bill and above. What's Corey shop called? Uh, apps. How would apps? Is the Sea Cow Blake similar to Wright McGill 36? No, totally different. The 36 inch Wright McGill is, is very flexible. It's a good rod to keep the fish pinned. Doesn't have the sensitivity, and it's also now a one piece. Um, and there's a reason they're $35, right? Very good $35 rod. It's a very good $35. Don't get me wrong, but the real seats are from 1993. The real seat. Yeah, but it's one of the best real seats on the market right now. How is it the best real seat? For, you can for, cut yourself here. For ice rod, who has a better real seat than that? I mean, why do ice rod need to stick to 1993? This is 2016. Like, yeah, I know. I agree. That's one thing. First of all, do you know what happened with the greatest thing that happened in 1993? That. Were you born in 1993? No. No, you don't know. You don't know. Do you guys know what happened in 1993? Probably. They're probably the going Montreal Canadian won the Stanley Cup. Oh, good Lord. Lord. That's what's up. Was that the last time they won it? I should not sure if the league said won it won in like what? Is it? When's your dad born? What year? Late 60s, I think. Yeah, so he was a, he wasn't even born when the Leafs won, won a Stanley Cup last Jesus night. Jesus Christ. Hey, they they might win this week this year. They have the team to do it. They have a good team. But it's the last year they got a chance to do it. How's that eyes all down now? Yeah, he was my opinion. Yeah. And we got to like watch it the Raptors or something. I mean, Tampa Bay's gonna be hard to beat. Tampa Bay's stacked. Dude. Tampa Bay's gonna dude, be Kucher, hard to beat. Kucherov is such a steal for his contract. But the problem is keeping that cap the next year if they do win the cup. Who? Tampa Bay? Or anybody. Yeah. Right? Everybody wants more money. I wonder how the Leafs would play against Boston. Boston's a rough team, man. They never play good against Boston. But yeah. I think they could beat Boston. I mean, the, the Leafs nearly won the cup. When? <laughs> when was the last time they nearly won the cup? <laughs> you guys are all better. That's what I said. What about the, about, the, about the least? Oh man, I was gonna put it in the video. I didn't put it in the video. Uh, what, hey guys, what did you think? Comment. What did you guys think of that video I, I, I uploaded tonight? I wasn't gonna post it till Wednesday, but I wanted to make my boy Will at Wiki Custom Rod, you know, show him some appreciation. If you guys do want some custom rods, he can make them for you. Um, but if you guys want to save some money and free order that's the way to go as well uh and for the lake rod i don't think with the lake trout rod i don't i don't think we're gonna go with the cork rod i mean the cork bud is nice it's, it's very pretty the cork rod but but i think we're gonna go eva we're going to be able to save a few dollars, and it's just so much lighter, man. It's, it's a lot lighter. So it's much lighter. Li and it's being lightweight, it might be a bit more sensitive, too. Yeah. Um, what what I really like, what I really like to see here, you know the villains, the way they lock up at the front? Mm -hmm. Have that little thing at the back. Oh, the little locking ring? Yeah. No, that little carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's short. It's about this long. It'd be so nice. Mm -hmm. It would be so nice. Um, I want to put X tube rod grip. What? Laura says, uh, Seb, I have a challenge for you a hundred dollar ice fishing challenge. Is it a hundred dollar USD or a hundred dollar Canadian? Big difference. What's your challenge, my friend? What's your challenge? <laughs> What's up, Chang? Just logging in. How many people we got there? We can't see. Um, what do you think? What do you say? Me. Make a guess. Seven, oh, time out. Don't say nothing. Need three. Don't say nothing. Don't don't read. Don't read. I already read it. The the closest, the furthest. You read it already? Yeah. No, that's from the year the Stanley Cup was on. Okay. What's the most people that we've seen on here? 
Uh, I'd see you was it like 106 or something. Where did you see that? For like 102. Where? Oh, right now? Yeah. No, I don't know. The most right we now. ever has 144. Really? Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Um, I don't think I told people. I told people. I told people at work today, they were, they were talking about streaming on Twitch. It's like, yeah, I, 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 I'm on a stream. It's not on Twitch, though. They're like, and they were like, we get like seven viewers. I'm like, oh, great. 86, 86, 84, 86. They are custom, Chang. Custom Rob's, my friend, for now. Yeah, everybody's watching the Oscars, dude. I told them, I sent the guys from the Oscars an email. If you want to host, I'll get CBAF to host it. And I never got an email back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they would never. They I would take that picture with me with the knife, and they'd be like, "We can't have that guy." Said, he will bring his college you shirt. You don't even have to pay for a shirt or anything. Did you see the guy that paid actors to like beat him up, pour some fake gasoline on him, and a noose on his neck? That's the world we live into now. People hire people to make other people look bad. That's crazy. And the guy, okay, we gotta talk about this. Was this the GCA guy? I don't know. He's he's on a show. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was all over the news when I was in the US last week. <laughs> okay, what's your challenge? A hundred dollars. Okay, well, what's the challenge? Uh, booty, it's not the underwater footage is not from an underwater camp, it's from a GoPro. I don't get to see the footage until I get home. Hmm. Um, what, were you, what were we saying? Sorry. We were saying, yeah, did you see the guy that bashed on Life Single Message Board? And the next day, his sled got stolen within 24 hours. Really? Straight up. Like, you got to be careful what you say out there. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, no one can bring it to their meat or sled stolen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but it's fishy. Very fishy. Yeah. Very, very fishy. I feel bad for the guy. You know any chop shops around here? You don't say anything. I think I know one. <laughs> oh, I do, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, Where we bought that motor yeah, for all yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got definitely oh, for sure. I know where the sled is. <laughs> Yeah, I told them too. I sent them a message asking yeah. you should go check out place. Yeah. They, they, they think they, they, yeah. Yeah. I think they're trying to be legit now because they bought that shop, but they even told me, oh, we got caught by the government. But, uh, yeah, I told, I told that guy, I don't know him personally. I said, dude, you got to go check there for your slide in a couple of days and keep going back. Mm -hmm. Go check at the back because it could be there. I think most of those slides probably come from up north, though. Yeah, come north down, they don't come south up. Could be wrong. Danielle yeah, says fishing has been tough in the north end of Lake Cinco. Um, what were we saying? Thanks, Chris, man. That's awesome. Awesome. Now, I love messages like that. I'm glad you got your nephew through some white fish and hopefully he can yeah. focus his passion and his goals towards fishing. That's awesome. You know, that's I don't come from an easy past. Nobody does. Everybody's been through some stuff. You, everybody's been through some stuff. And for me, fishing has given me goals to achieve. And those goals require a good career or working and, and working towards yourself. Um What's your goal for this year? Bass season. Bass season. I have yet to make one. My goal for the first things first is not to kill myself with that boat or kill the boat. I gotta baptize that boat, man. What? I gotta baptize that boat. You wanna listen that's the you know I gotta do the boat? Put 10 grand insurance on it and we're well, out. Okay, what are you gonna do with that boat, man? You gotta understand if anything happens. It was a boat meant yeah. to learn. Exactly. Yeah. It was a boat meant to learn. You remember my metal boat? Yeah, the tin boat. I think I have back problems because of it. Oh, for sure. Me too, man. Yeah. For sure. I looked at a metal boat and I like, oh, 
Nope, getting the fiberglass. <laughs> you know, and you guys want to talk about aluminum boat. I'm a batch from companies here, straight up. You buy a welded hull, and you're going to argue with me that a welded hull is more stronger than a riveted hull? Before we get into technical as to why welded hulls are more fragile than uh, riveted hull, explain to me why an airplane is not welded. That right there should kill the conversation, straight up. Aluminum is not meant to be welded like other metals. It needs to be welded at an exact temperature. So you have to be put cooling fan and all that stuff. And if you see them where the guys are welding the aluminum, I mean, they, they're not, they, they can't afford the skillful welder like you can. You should not, I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. But a riveted hull is much stronger than a welded hull. Times 10. Mm -hmm. Times 10. And if your rivet pops out, you can put a new rivet. Try to re-weld from the inside. You gotta take everything out. Oh, no. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. If you're going to buy an aluminum boat, buy a riveted hull, not a welded hull. And don't tell me that your aluminum thickness is stronger. It doesn't matter. Aluminum is not meant to be welded at certain temperature and it needs to reach that certain temperature that you don't need to to be welded. Yes, I work in the metal industry. You want to argue with me? I will bring a guy with a PhD to tell you that you're wrong. It's true. Aluminum is very sensitive to be welded at a certain temperature. And it's really hard to keep that weld at a, the right temperature for that um, a long amount of time. So there you go. Buy a riveted hall. Little education right there. Now boat companies are gonna email me saying, Yeah, well. There you go. Okay, why is the plane not welded then? What do you think of the Vexus boats? Why is the plane not welded then? <laughs> it's true though. Hey, straight up. Straight up. Why is the plane not welded? I don't know. Because it, aluminum, when it's welded, it's not made to be flexed. That weld is more fragile. The hardness of that weld is higher compared to the rest of the metal sheet. A low hardness, you're not gonna have cracks because it's flexible. But once you once you weld it, the hardness becomes stronger. It's stronger, so it's more susceptible to cracking. See, I'm boring them out. <sighs> so yeah. Nexus boat, I haven't seen them, I don't know. They're they're I don't even know what they do. They're like aluminum. With like fiberglass, it's the, the the people that used to make uh, Ranger. You yeah, those Vexus. I mean, they're like aluminum, aluminum boats serve a purpose. Uh, you can buy a welded hull. Don't have a big engine on it, and don't. It's not going to be met to a pound wave. Yeah. And when I say wave, mate, one footer, you, you might be okay. A cruiser wake at full speed, it's going to damage that boat. We know that. We do know that. <laughs> Um, don't buy it. Don't buy a tractor with red carpet. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> what? Don't buy a tractor with red carpet. If, if a tractor with red carpet it goes, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Delete that. Delete that. <laughs> anyway, you got a good deal. All right. <laughs> so, do you really need a, a chirp ice juicer? Elite seven, or can I get away with the 920? That's all I'm using it. I chucked that nice transducer that comes with the unit. It's, a, it's an amazing transducer, but the cone's not wide enough. I'm using a 920. That's what I use online. Um, I bought another uh, Elite seven G2. It's not a nice unit. It's gonna be his unit if he wants it. But if I'm when I'm gonna use it for ice fishing, it's gonna have a 920 on it. It's not going to have that uh, chirp transducer. I right, chirp transducer is great, but that 920 is what I like better, a wider cone. It takes too long to weld a plane. Uh, Welding is much quicker than riveting, I think. Cord's not long enough. <laughs> no. 
I've never been an aluminum craftsman, but they look like nice boats. You know, when I see Aaron Weed driving his tiller, I wish that's what it was in tournament. Tillers only. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, he has a lot more boat. He doesn't have a console. He's, he's got a lot more. You have to yell yeehaw every time you go over what cruiser rate though with a tiller. I mean, he, I wish tournaments were restricted to like lower horsepower too. Yeah. Everybody is 250s because you need to now. But if everybody had 90s, you'd st still sink playing field. Yeah. You know? Aluminum craft, I think they. Uh, they're expensive now, the aluminum crafts, but they're very nice boats. Guys, they don't weld aircrafts because welds are proven to crack over time. It's not about easier fix. Um, the skin is too thin. The boats are the same thickness. They rivet aluminum because rivets are better when it, it needs to be flexible. You ever been on a plane and you watch the wing go like this? Thank God it's riveted because if it was welded, it would crack and tear, tear off. Rivets don't crack. Uh, any simple while I target trip just with the drone. I'm going to try to see if I can see them. They put it in the Talbot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you probably don't want to go there right now. It's probably flowing like crazy. Talbot? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably it's, it's blown up. Depends. We didn't get a huge, I don't know, I haven't been after the rain, but we haven't had a huge, huge meltdown in Barry yet. Um, hmm. Seeing my record ling. People don't realize how big that fish it is. It is huge, that fish. Humongous. It's huge. It'll get broken, but people don't realize how big it is. Yeah. There's big fish in there, but like the one I caught was humongous. Yours was so much bigger. Did you see the replica? It's people so will come, they're like, that's the right. Oh my god. You guys seen it at the show. Um Cheng Lu's asking again, uh, do you stay on the Gobi pattern in February? Uh areas out of Beaverton. Last time went out marked tons, but uh no bites using the gobies. Here's the thing is everybody thinks I fish the north end or I fish the east side or I fish long shore. I fish everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. A lot of my fishing this year has been done in the south end. There's a lot more action, a bit more pressure, but there's that. The fish seem to be more active. There's more lake trout over there. It's, I fish everywhere. And I fish one area this weekend that I fished a week before, and next weekend I'm gonna go somewhere else. That's like me. I go in next week, I'm not going back to where I caught in last week. No, I'm gonna have to try somewhere else. Because they move. They move. Yeah. The guy the guys that go out and it's like, I'm not mark I'm not catching anything. You know, and I go back to the same spot after and I I mean you gotta try like we used to have one area that used to catch so much fish. Remember? Mm -hmm. We used to go there, it was a guaranteed double digit days on both white fish and lake trout. I have not you, how many times have you hit this year? Two, three times? I've hit it two, three times and not marked one. Nothing. Uh, I don't think we marked one fish there. I went there on one six. One fish. fish. One. You know how many fish we used to mark there on the morning? And it was like right on the bottom. I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's probably a goby. Just it might have been a bass. Bottom. It probably was a bass if we're being honest. Probably was a bass. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to see a lunar craft. Like I'm just saying in general about aluminum. You can argue with a PhD guy, not a PhD guy, but I'm going to tell you. Um, do you ever think about hiring a camera apprentice? Yes, I would love to. I would love to, but the problem with that is a lot of guys want to come do that and they want to fish. So their main goal is not to help me capture a video is to capture fish and if i'm gonna pay a guy i mean i want him to do what i'm asking for i would love to do that yes but especially on the boat too all right guys we're gonna wrap this up it's been two hours thank you very much if you're interested in those rods send me a message on 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 instagram we don't have pricing 
It's going to be above $100 per rod, one-year warranty. If something happened, you, you can pay a small amount of that rod. We'll replace that rod. You got to pay shipping. Um, we're thinking about doing 100 of each. So first come, first serve. We're not taking money yet. We should have a price by the end of this week on how much it's going to cost to build those rods. And those rods, although there's two inch difference, there's big difference in those rods. Big difference in action. Yeah, big difference. One is really meant for lake trout, one is meant for whitefish. So you're fishing them like this. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't don't forget to smash that like button on the videos. That's that's how I, I appreciate you guys. We will see you guys next week. Peace.